thank you very much for this introduction, just for this introduction, Jean-Francois. So hello everybody and thank you to, for, to the organizer for inviting me uh, to present my works. So it's some recent and uh, less recent works. Um, okay, I think it's okay for me. Everybody uh, can listen to me? Yes, okay. Okay, I can speak uh, um, uh, higher. Yes, it's okay. okay. So, um, thank you to the organizer for inviting me to present my works, um, recent and less recent uh, works. So, um, this talk is uh, dedicated to the memory of uh, our friend and colleague Mila Nikolova. So, usually I begin my talk with a small joke, and uh, today I won't. Uh, so, I'm sorry for the, 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 the people that. Uh, was uh, attended to this uh, to this um, uh, joke. So this uh, <coughs> so this uh, uh, work has been done uh, with uh, uh, Mario Dilberger and uh, with she, who is uh, the head of our research team, Magritte, in Ria team, and uh, Thomas Mouzon, uh, who was a master student in our team. Um, so uh, I am associate professor at the University of Lorraine, and I talk we to uh, I talk about uh, coupling some variational methods uh, with uh, CNN for image colorization. So I, I, I give a very uh, very appealing title. So I hope that uh, you you will uh, like uh, this uh, this talk. So what is colorization for general public? Uh, so the colorization consists just uh, in turning uh, an input a grayscale image. Uh, into a color run, so uh, we can see that it's a very uh, hard problem because there is a very uh, a, a big loss of information uh, during the transformation of RGB image into a grayscale one. But uh, this um, this method is very uh, useful to make uh, more attractive some uh, old movies, some old black and white movies, uh, for making, for instance, uh, historical documentaries and make them more appealing for young people, teenagers, and so on, who uh, usually don't like a history documentary. So, so the here is a presentation for a general public, but what exactly consists a colorization in terms of uh, mass? So just defining the grayscale image as a weighted average of uh, the red, green, blue channels, so RGB, I will call that. So uh, the luminance channel, Y, uh, is a weighted average with a, a, bigger, um, a, a bigger weight for the green channel because our eye is uh, more sensitive. So this was dedicated for uh, to, um, uh, television standards, but now we, we used it for, um, for, for the colorization methods. So it's, it's a basic hypothesis of this uh, colorization problem. And then, uh, because we have to find uh, these three channels, R, G, and B, we defined uh, two complementary channels, uh, which are called chrominance channels, and which are denoted by U and V. So there is a lot of definition for luminance and chrominance standards. Uh, I choose this one because it's uh, linear with respect to RGB. Um, in the, this talk, we will discuss also about uh, LAB uh, color space. So it's approximately the same, but nonlinear. So uh, just colorizing an image is uh, from a given uh, Y channel is to recover uh, the two channels, U and V, the chrominance channels, uh, on all the image. So it's quite difficult because we have to recover all the information and there is no uh, link, no mathematical link uh, between the Y channel and the U and V channel uh, a priori. So uh, we will see how to give some additional information. So the first way to add information to add color information to a grayscale image is to use uh, some, uh, some uh, user, some human. Uh, there is a lot uh, onto on the, the world. So um, the, the first uh, way is to use a polygonal approach. So the fully automatic approach consists in uh, drawing some polygons onto the grayscale image, and then we apply a, a value for U and for V uh, for each of these polygons. And with, uh, in addition, with the Y channel, we can recover uh, RGB uh, images. We will see in the next slides what are the, the drawbacks of this method. And the second uh, approach is uh, automatic diffusion, uh, which consists in uh, putting some point of color called scribbles onto the image. And 
and then diffuse it with uh, variational or PDE methods, for instance, uh, and then with the hypothesis that if there is uh, no controls uh, in the Y channel, there are, there are neither uh, no controls in the, um, in the U and V channel. Uh, so it's a, a classical diffusion which stops when there is some gradient. So here is the, 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 auto, the automatic diffusion. It's called automatic diffusion. So, but it's quite tedious because if we have very complex images with textures or so on, uh, it can be very long. So another method, so here is some uh, drawbacks of the fully manual uh, method. So, so you can see that you can see the, the polygon <coughs> shape. This is done with a, by a professional expert user. Uh, so you can see that there is some artifacts. So to avoid that, to avoid that, you can use a diffusion method. But to avoid uh, the user interaction, you can use some exemplar-based methods. So if you want to colorize here uh, the target image, which, which is a grayscale image, you can use a reference image in color, and you have to match the two images to uh, take uh, to bring the colors of the reference onto the target image. So uh, with a patch-based method, you can just convert this color image into a source image. Uh, yes, yes, it's a source image, and you can convert it in a grayscale version. And then for each pixel of the target image, you can compare the patch uh, around this pixel with the patches of the source image. And when you find the closest one, you can uh, extract the uh, chrominance value. And in combination with the luminance one, you can recover a color. And for each pixel, you can recover all the image. So it's, uh, it has been introduced by Welsh uh, in 2002. And uh, it has been uh, then further uh, extended, uh, for instance, by Gupta and collaborator. So here, there is no uh, use of patch, but there is a use of uh, sphere per pixel uh, segmentation. Uh, so I think it's quite uh, hard to see. Maybe you can see them. there is some sphere per pixel here uh, on the two images. So this here is the reference and the target image. And then after the sphere per pixel extraction, you can uh, extract some features and matches it. So for instance, uh, it's done by a, a discrete Fourier transform, discrete um, cosine transform, sorry, and then some matching. And after that, it puts some scribbles, and then there is some uh, diffusion method in order to obtain a colorized result. So it works a little bit better uh, near the controls than the method of Walsh, because it's uh, more adapted, adapted uh, due to the super pixel segmentation. So then uh, another method uh, in order to uh, colorize some faces. So uh, here a source image and here is a target image. Uh, first, we transform the source image into uh, a luminance value. And then we compute a map between these two images based on uh, variational methods uh, with a regularization um, like uh, a linearized um, elastical potential, elastic potential. And then when the map is computed, you can uh, map all the chrominance values uh, of the, the source image. And then, by combination of the luminance and the, the, luminance and the chrominance, you can find with a uh, YUV inversion the uh, original colorized image. So this is quite automatic, but it's not fully automatic, uh, because here you need to uh, find a good source image. And for instance, if you have a face uh, with glasses, you cannot colorize it with a face uh, without glasses, for instance. Uh, the matching is not uh, well computed. So here is the uh, last uh, example-based method I, I, I present in this talk. Next, so to avoid the choice of uh, source image, you can use uh, some uh, deep learning approach. So here the, the list is not exhaustive because I didn't watch the Google Scholar since uh, six months. So I think you can double the, the list now. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, approaches uh, based on the classical uh, networks, uh, so architectures. Uh, so the problem is that most of them are done without uh, any hindsight about uh, a color space and color problem. So just plug in the data uh, in a network, uh, use a big GPU, and, and it's, 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 uh, it's enough to make a publication. So um, now, uh, what are the main problems? So I retain especially uh, the, the method of, of Shang et al. because uh, uh, in my opinion, it's uh, the one that uh, used a lot of um, a lot of uh, things about uh, color space and so on. So I retain that, and I, I will explain in the next uh, slide uh, what are the drawbacks of this method, and then I will explain how to plug this method into a variational framework in order to remove uh, all the, the drawbacks of this method. So 
what are the drawbacks. So um, I'm sorry because with the video projector, it, it will be quite hard maybe with the screen. Yes, uh, in fact, I will explain where are the, the, the problems and, and I, I hope you, you will trust me. So here is the target image and you want to colorize it and you use directly the result of uh, Shang and collaborator. And you see that you can have some halo, halo effect around the cat and you can see here a melting of blue and red that gives some uh, purple color and so it's not very uh, very beautiful and when uh, regularizing it uh, we will see that we can remove some halo and uh, avoiding the mixing of color so there is two points i will remove of this method with variational me with a variational approach first the problem of halo effect and then the problem of mixing uh, the colors coming from the database. So um, I will first uh, explain how I will proceed. Uh, so first uh, using a CNN and then plugging it into a Rodin, Rodin Orsher and Fatemi model. Uh, it's a naive approach, but in fact it's too, too simple. It, it won't work. Now why? Because first uh, okay it will remove some halo effect but the mixing of colors since the uh, input data are mixing of colors, it won't remove this, uh, this kind of problem. So in order to really, uh, to really uh, remove the two uh, mentioned problem, I have really to uh, explain you how work the CNN of Shang and, and collaborator. And I will explain how to uh, keep some data uh, from some layers of the uh, CNN. So the uh, CNN of Shang and collaborator, so I have to explain how it works uh, precisely. So it's a, a classical VGG architecture with lab labeling. So the uh, end label is just uh, a subgrid, uh, subsampling of the image. And on one pixel of this subsampling, you have to compute the probability distribution of the colors. And the colors are taken from a subset of all the colors. And this subset have, has a size of uh, 3013 colors. Uh, 313 scholars, sorry. Um, and then uh, the authors uh, proposed to uh, make a non elite mean. I, I will explain that uh, in the next, uh, in next slides. Uh, and after an elite mean, you can extract exactly uh, one color in one pixel. And just after a uh, subsampling, you can have the chromaticity and the uh, lightness, which is an input. You recombine, in, recombine it into a RGB space and you uh, give uh, some RGB image. So um, I think that the authors uh, used an elite mean because it's uh, easy to uh, implement. Uh, for example, with uh, Cafe Toolbox, it's just uh, one standard layer. So you don't have to, uh, to, to put another new layer. But the problem of uh, this an elite mean, it's done pixel wise. So there is no regularity of the results, of course. So that explains the, the appearing of uh, halo effect. And uh, then the NLID mean naturally will mean some different colors. So it produced some problems that I will explain next. And so there is uh, an effect of uh, mid mixing colors. So I just will uh, uh, explain how are chosen these uh, different colors for the, lab the labeling problem of uh, this uh, CNN. So it's just, just, just chosen uh, onto the LAB space. Uh, in order to have a regular grid onto the AB, sp uh, AB space, uh, so, uh, reg so regular in the sense of the um, Euclidean norm. So because uh, the, in the LAB space, the Euclidean norm corresponds to the uh, perception uh, distance of our uh, uh, human visual system. So th uh, there is some colors that are chosen in order that uh, the corresponding color into the RGB uh, he is in the gamut of RGB, so that's why I explained that this, these uh, authors uh, really have a hindsight uh, on, uh, on color space. Uh, so so um, uh, Mila uh, has um, uh, made a paper with the Gabi Steidel uh, in, uh, two, um, uh, in the 2013 about this kind of uh, gamut problem. And here the authors really uh, take care to this kind of uh, gamut problem. So. I just want to make uh, an additional remark about colors that if you take some two colors with the same saturation, if you average it, you have some color with uh, lower saturation and a color with lower saturation is drabber than the original one. So you don't have to uh, average some colors in the color space directly. 
uh, it's uh, it's not uh, it uh, it um, it removes so you you have a loss of uh, saturation so you make your image uh, drubber. So first, no mean. So annelid mean is a is a sort of mean. So uh, you don't have to use it. So uh, it's a second reason to avoid to uh, use annelid mean. So um, so what happens when using annelid mean? So I, I see that so with the projector, it's horrible. So I will explain where are the problems. So first. If you use directly the mean, you can see that uh, that uh, you have some uh, drop result. If you use directly the mode, you have some shinier result, but the problem is that you have some halo effect here, for instance, and here, for instance. And the annealed mean is a trade-off between the mean and the mode, and um, with a, a typical parameter given by the hustles, uh, you have a trade-off interesting uh, with uh, some image a little bit drabber, but not too much, and uh, some halo effect, but not really visible. But it's not uh, really uh, interesting. We can do a better risk variational uh, approach. So in an in, in mean is a trade-off between, uh, yes, with the T parameter, which gives the mean and the mode, uh, yes, between the two. So uh, we will use some uh, regularization and some approach to choose specially, especially uh, one color. So how it works now. So first is the same as the uh, model of uh, Shang and collaborators, so uh, a VGG, a standard VGG approach. And then we have the pixel-wise di distribution of all the colors. So it's like uh, the Shang and collaborator, but it is used for uh, initializing a regularization method. We uh, choose first W, W which is uh, a probability uh, pixel-wise distribution of the colors. And then it will also choose U, which will be a regularized version of uh, the, the, um, the, the choosing colors. So it gives first a binary uh, pixel-wise color distribution first, and uh, then it also gives some chromaticity, which corresponds to the regularized ver version of this uh, choice of color. And then when uh, transforming uh, that uh, into the RGB space, with, in addition with the uh, lightness, you can recover uh, uh, RGB uh, image. So, uh, in fact, the weight of this CNN are used, in fact, to initialize a uh, functional, as that I will explain in the uh, 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 further uh, slide. So, uh, I just will explain how to regularize color with total variation because it's not something uh, completely uh, obvious. Uh, so, uh, this I, I, I put here a very small model. Uh, uh, which uh, is the uh, derivative of uh, Rudin, Osher, and Fatemi, but um, just uh, dedicated to uh, the, the uh, colorization problem. So you have a total variation, which I, uh, which I, I called um, uh, coupled total variation uh, in the next of my talk, and uh, um, L2 norm uh, between the, the data and the, uh, the chrominance uh, that we want to compute. And the coupled uh, total variation here is uh, written here. And you can see that it's a standard total variation here, if, we, if I remove this term. But in fact, I have added uh, the gradient of the luminance uh, into, uh, into the, the square root. And I will see in the following uh, what is the advantage to uh, put this uh, gradient here. So you see here it's a, a parameter. I will discuss about this parameter also in the next slide. So, First here, it's um, a toy example in one dimension. So I I for instance, if you have a luminance channel, here is a contour, and uh, a chrominance channel, here is a contour. Uh, if we compute the, co uh, the coupled total variation, we have this term. Uh, whereas if the contours are, are not at the same location, you can see that the value of the, to uh, to of the coupled total variation is uh, this one. And you can see that the value of this term is higher than the value of this one. Um, uh, because the terms are, are, are positive, not negative. Um, so you have this inequality. So if we want to minimize the coupled total variation, the effect will be a coupling between the luminance and the chrominance channels. So it's important for colorization to avoid halo effect because halo effect is just uh, a, a, a discoupling uh, between uh, the luminance and the chrominance channel. So, in two dim dimension, uh, here I put a very simple um, uh, cr uh, chrominance in painting problem. So we have a mask uh, which corresponds to scribbles, and here we, we you have some data which corresponds to scribbles. And here is the coupled total variation, and 
by minimizing this, uh, this um, um, model, you have, uh, if there is no coupling, so if we, you remove this term with a cl classical uh, Rudin, Osher, and Fatemi, you have some halo effect, and if you put uh, this term, you have a coupling, so there is no halo effect. So um, the, the controls the field uh, 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 slightly better. And so, uh, what is the uh, gamma parameter? So the, its influence. So if we put a gamma very high, you have a, a good fitting. If you have no coupling, of course, uh, it doesn't fit. And if we put um, gamma equal to one, it's a trade-off between uh, between the, the best fitting and the uh, lowest perimeter, which is useful in practice for, for, uh, for example, um, uh, colorization of uh, JPEG images where there is some block effect sometimes and there is some, uh, some uh, uh, false uh, controls and it uh, fits better with a uh, uh, middle of range uh, uh, parameter. So now how to choose one color in one pixel with a regularization approach and some weight. So here it's a, a model uh, I introduced uh, during my, my PhD. Uh, it's just, um, so here you can see a regularization term and here you can see a fidelity data term uh, which is composed of a weighted average of uh, some, uh, of some um, uh, L2 norm from a candidate. So CI will be one color uh, coming from the set of uh, label colors given by the, uh, the network of uh, Shang and collaborator. And U will be the result which interests you, us, for, sorry. And W is a weight. So we can, for instance, uh, uh, initialize some um, numerical scheme with the weights from the uh, CNN of uh, Shang and collaborator. And here is the regularization of the result. So in fact, uh, this uh, model is based on the central part, which is a coupling between the weights and the result. And in fact, this model will regularize the final result, U, and will choose the weight in order to get a, a regularized result. And uh, the question that we can ask now is, uh, why this model will choose especially uh, one weight for one color and not uh, an average of different weights? In fact, the answer uh, is in a lemma. Uh, so if we choose in this example u, a random variable, real valued, uh, over the set of uh, its uh, bound. So uh, in fact, the uh, minimizer of this central term with uh, the, the constraint to be onto a simplex uh, is reduced to uh, one point, so the minimizer is unique. And so almost everywhere, of, of course, because there is a probability. If we uh, had the constraint that to, to be onto the canonical basis uh, here, the minimizer is unique. And moreover, the minimizer of this function is the minimizer with respect to W, of course, is the same as the minimizer of this function. So the weights in the output are binary. And this is a great advantage because we don't do any mean of different colors. So now the, uh, the, the huge question is uh, how to minimize uh, this kind of model. So in fact, we have a non-smooth, uh, non-convex model. It's a B-convex, so it's convex with respect to U. It's, res it's uh, convex with respect to W, but is, it's not uh, convex with respect to the uh, coupling variable. So to minimize it, the first uh, thing was to, uh, to design an algorithm uh, inspired by uh, the, the paper of Schomboll and Park. So we use the same algorithm, but just adding a forward backward um, uh, it, uh, update uh, for the uh, W variable. And uh, so um, there is no proof of convergence of it, but numerically it works well. Uh, so uh, it's, it's quite fine. But um, in fact, in the, the following of my work, I have, um, I have worked with Mila and Pauline Tan, and uh, we have um, changed a little bit the, to the coupled total variation. So we have added a regularization term. Uh, so in fact, if the gradient of uh, this, uh, of uh, the luminance uh, become uh, close, uh, close, uh, too close uh, of uh, zero, uh, we just had one. And uh, just with that, we can uh, differentiate, differentiate uh, this uh, coupled total variation. And after differentiating, we can use a block coordinate descent. So uh, uh, with an inertial uh, update of, the, 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 of U. 
And moreover, we can uh, use a Bregman-based uh, model, so the proximity operator uh, for W, which was a projection onto the simplex in the previous version, uh, become, become a proximity operator with a norm which is um, um, uh, um, entropy. And so we can uh, avoid the projection onto the simplex for W. And for this model, the convergence is guaranteed and uh, there is uh, no more need of a projection onto a simplex, which has uh, two advantages. So in terms of uh, results that uh, we have, so the uh, primal, the inspired primal dual algorithm will converge. Uh, so at the first sight, you can, uh, we can see that it converge um, uh, with a low rate uh, for the speed. But in fact, if we zoom here at this, uh, at this point, we can see that, uh, in fact, the primal dual uh, remains the uh, fastest uh, algorithm for this problem, uh, even if uh, we, we don't have any uh, proof of convergence. And uh, is it important uh, that the convergence uh, will be uh, so low at uh, 500 iterations? The answer is yes, because if we uh, compare the weights after uh, 500 iterations, for the uh, uh, block coordinate distance, you can see that all the weights are not binaries, so it's not interesting. Uh, because, but uh, in, in, in contrast, for this algorithm, you can see that the, uh, the, the weights are binary. So we have to find a trade-off between a fast algorithm and uh, so with, uh, with no um, um, guarantee of convergence and the, uh, a lower, uh, um, lower fast uh, uh, algorithm with proof of convergence. In fact. It's easy to uh, to um, you know, I say um, to um, initialize the uh, low algorithm with uh, the primal dual, and uh, you can see uh, that we can uh, design, in fact, an algorithm which converge uh, and which is fast. So now numerical results. So um, as you cannot see in these uh, pictures. Uh, this uh, image here is rubber than this one. In fact, you, you should have a very good uh, a screen and to swap between the two images. But in fact, we can quantitatively uh, show something. Here in red, is, it is a histogram of our method, whereas in blue, you have the uh, histogram of the saturation of the, um, of the original method. And the saturation uh, shows that um, the image uh, is rubber with the original method. So, so uh, in terms of um, shiny, uh, we have some, some shinier uh, results and uh, we can quantitatively uh, show that the average of the saturation for our method is um, substanti substantially uh, higher than the, the original method. So here, uh, in order to show that the halo effect can be removed with our method, I, I put some uh, uh, some um, uh, to say uh, uh, some toy example, so we can see that there is there is some halo effect, and here not. Uh, here there is no grid in the real images. I think it's a, a JPEG compression uh, effect uh, of the PDF. Uh, there is exactly uh, some uh, constant part. And uh, then, so uh, this uh, toy shows that uh, this concept uh, can remove a halo effect. Uh, so uh, we have uh, we have win something. We have won something. Uh, here are some results with, uh, with real images, so you can see some uh, halo effect here on the lion. So if you see this image, you cannot see uh, directly the, the problems, but uh, an expert will see immediately uh, the, the halo effect. And if I zoom, uh, you, you can also see some halo effect. And here on this image, you can see some red effect, and it is removed here. Also some, yes, some old images, you, know, you can see that it works. And here you can see that it can remove some strange effect of uh, green and red by uh, making them constant. So finally, I will uh, show that uh, there is some limitation uh, of time, first for my talk, and uh, some limitation of, uh, of the CNN uh, to colorize images. For instance, here it's an uh, old uh, image, old face. You can see that there is some green effect. And uh, so ah, I, I thought that it was due to the, the database, who have, which, have no, uh, which has no um, face images. But in fact, with the nozzle method, you can uh, remove some such artifacts. And here it's green with places. So uh, yes, uh, it's hard to decide how. Uh, so this is uh, the main problem of CNNs. And uh, with our method, you cannot uh, remove this kind of artifact, of course. Uh, so for faces, the uh, exemplar-based uh, still remains uh, the best method. 
So as a conclusion, so we have designed a system which is able to colorize images in a full automatic way because you just have to, to plug just the input and the, the database the, makes the, the rest of, uh, of adding uh, information. So about coupling CNN with a variational method, uh, we did it. And um, some further improvement. Uh, so first, the convergence of the uh, total variation with a B-convex term, uh, which would be uh, interesting um, for, for primal dual approach um, with a B-convex term, uh, because uh, we have a fast algorithm and we would like to prove that it converges. Uh, and uh, some further improvement is the devising of these results. So uh, there is some bias in the Rudin, Osher, and Fatemi uh, method. So uh, you can see a, a very good talk of uh, Nicolas Papadakis, I advise you, about this uh, subject. Uh, so um, I don't know if he, if he will uh, discuss about color, but he will discuss about uh, devising of Rudin, Osher, and Fatemi uh, model. So, this is uh, almost uh, on the end in comparison of uh, this uh, first, uh, this first uh, uh, improvement. So I uh, thank you very much for your attention. If, if you have any question, uh, please feel free to, to ask it. Well, thank you very much, Fabien, for your talk. Uh, we, have we have time for a few questions. Did you try different uh, color space? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. But uh, I uh, will do that. Yes. In fact, it's a very, very, very recent work, so I didn't explore all the all the thing. But um, uh, yes, uh, I'm trying to, uh, to 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 use, for instance, the uh, YUV color space to try it. But uh, no, I didn't uh, try a lot of color space now. But yes, I will do that. <laughs> okay, so next time, next question will be on the low side. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you. Uh, do you think that it's a possibility to put your model as a loss function in order to train the network, or is it? Uh, uh, yes, it is. Uh, because uh, to do that, you just have to uh, compute a backpropagation of a model uh, with respect to the input data, and you know that it's possible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, did you say, no, okay. And uh, would it? be useful to learn the, your gamma parameter or the parameter? For instance, yes. Uh, it's quite harder to uh, derivate the gamma parameter, but I think that numerically it's possible with the chain rule, but uh, yes, it's quite, uh, it's quite hard. Oh, okay, thank you. In fact, it's just, uh, the problem is just uh, computing the backpropagation, and uh, in fact, it's done very fast uh, with uh, uh, backpropagation algorithm, of course, because it's uh, just done with direct pass, but in fact, uh, for computing the <laughs> backpropagation through a uh, variational method, you have to, uh, in fact, compute the derivative iteratively, and this is a very uh, hard uh, problem. Because you, if you make some hundred of epochs, you have to compute hundred, hundred of time uh, the, the, the minimization algorithm, so yes, it's really hard. question can be anywhere in the room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if no, no, no more questions, let's thank again our speaker.